front, I'm here to talk to you about uh, services side of the security market. So my title here, um, if like me, you're familiar and fond of um, popular films from the 1980s, um, you might think I'm here to talk to you about uh, the 30th anniversary of Top Gun, but no. Uh, the title here is to say that uh, of the, the three core uh, elements of the security market that we are using, tractors, uh, software, uh, appliances, so the hardware part, and services, it's services that we really think are the, by far the, the fastest growing elements of the market is. Uh, so to start off with, um, it's IDC, our little name is data, so again I'm going to start off with a, a bit of the monkey figure side of things. But uh, I just want to show you the segments we break services down into, and, and uh, uh, much like what Constantine ran you through with the software part of the thing, um, uh, we see security as much as uh, people at high level will say, oh, I'm not just pointing upwards, green uh, dashboard, everything's uh, hunky dory and lovely, everything's uh, uh, consistently good. Um, it, it, a rising tide doesn't lift all boats, so there is variation in the market. So, um, to start off, just to show on the, uh, the, the upright axis, volume of market million dollars. On the bottom, I'm going to compare volume for 2015, so the last complete full year, versus uh, volume in 2020, so the end of our current forecast. So, uh, to start off and see uh, on the left hand side of the graph is the um, Professional security services side of things, so the consulting, the implementation, and the inserts all together. Um, the, the largest part of the, the services market at the moment, and particularly implementation. Um, we've got education and training, slightly different, much, much smaller than the other segments of the market. And at the moment, in 2015, you've got to, the, the, the second uh, largest uh, segment of the market is the, the, the MSS side, managed security services. So if we fast forward now to 2020, uh, consulting is uh, growing pretty nicely, 8.2% compound annual growth rate, so that's a nice healthy uh, trend. Um, almost as strong in implementation, so together professional security services doing pretty well. Education and training, this is a dynamic market, it's been mentioned once or twice already. Uh, growth is not quite as strong as we're seeing in professional security services, and 2.7%, but there are interesting things going on here, so things like automation and self-service and so forth. But really, the, the, the main driver here is uh, MSS. This is the, the fastest growing area in the market. And uh, we can see by 2020, we actually see it's going to be the largest part of the market as well. So a really important statement that we're looking at here. So next up, what, what's behind this picture? Why, why is this happening? <laughs> well, um, I want to say that, uh, well, jump in the waters of all, man. We've seen the, uh, the, the growth is pretty strong. Um, uh, and it's uh, at a high level, it's because of the, the, the three meta trends that Doug spoke about right at the beginning. So we talked about how the uh, dynamic threat landscape is uh, uh, doing bad stuff to more people, um, more of the time zone and so forth. It's, people have to, to, to do more, they're, they're under pressure, they're, they're, their resources, security professionals are, are under pressure to do more uh, traditional models aren't necessarily going to cope with the, the challenge that they face. Uh, and, and all the while, digital transformation means that they're having to go about things differently too. They're having to worry about uh, meeting business needs. Um, and the, the, the regulatory part, of course, is uh, adding the regulatory burden, they have to do more so. so. <laughs> Um, this is driving growth in managed security services uh, particularly, uh, and, and this is for a few reasons. Um, uh, first of all, um, MSS providers are able to, to help with this, this pressure on resources that, that we're seeing uh, amongst the, the, the bio organisations through things like uh, automation, so they're able to deliver things without the, the, the need for, for, for uh, people to do it. Uh, but equally on the people side of things, uh, they have uh, robust um, uh, talent recruitment retention, so uh, perhaps uh, we can say it's more likely that, um, that, that these uh, MSS vendors are actually able to attract and retain uh, the security staff that perhaps a, a vendor alone, uh, just looking after one organization's need, it, it, it's much harder to, to keep them uh, interested and excited in a market that's uh, growing so fast. Um, as much as it's a market that's growing very fast, um, Everybody realises this, everybody wants to get on board, so um, it, it's a really crowded space. Revenue is going up like wildfire, as I'm showing you already, um, but uh, profit margins perhaps aren't, um, just because everybody's in there and it's, it's a challenge to set yourself apart, uh, just because it's so busy and, and competitive. So the final point of this slide is the fact that uh, in, in order to succeed in this market, um, you really need to, to find ways of differentiating yourself. Um, you need to find sharp elbows to help yourself get on top of that, that uh, train that's moving fast, crowding people. So the success factors. So, so how are you going to separate yourself in, in this fiercely competitive market? 
well, again, I'm breaking it down into three areas. Um, first of these is competing through through operating scale. So being able to um, present large numbers and how you're, you're going to go about helping your, your customers to, to address the opportunity here. So this could be in terms of the number of people that you have, uh, it could be in terms of the, the scale of the, 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 uh, the networks or web traffic or whatever it may be in which you can uh, derive insights. Um, at the other end of the scale, um, niche capability. So how have you got specific um, uh, skills, um, specifically trained personnel, um, IP through which you can deliver perhaps automated or as a service offerings. And finally, cost proximity. So are you physically close? Does, does your um, geographic coverage match um, and, and map onto those the customers you're addressing? Are you um, easy to engage with? Is it a, a chore for them to talk to you or not? Um, and, and, and in terms of um, where you're, you're physically located, uh, and in terms of your organisation's size, uh, all these things, how, how can you make it easier for, for customers to come and do business with you? Anyway, uh, wrapping this uh, section up, I'd like to pass over to uh, Carla, who's going to talk to you about the cloud.